All right, morning everyone. Another nice sunrise, I didn't get it today. It's a bit later, so it's not that nice orangey pinky color. But yeah, the clouds that we've been having lately just made it look really nice. Uh, just watered the garden. Um, got some poos to pick up. Uh, I've actually scored the day off today, uh, not by choice. Um, our water heater just packed it in. Um, I think I was only talking about it the other day on one of the videos. So what we've got is that solar panel just there apparently has a glycol in it. Um, heats the glycol up, goes to the tank that's down the side. We'll go and have a look. So it fills this tank up. Well, that's full of water. Heats that water up. And if it's a cloudy day for a couple days or a day, the booster kicks in. It's a gas booster. So that's all the connections there. So you've got uh, gas, gas in to run the booster. Um, hot, cold water in to fill the tank up. And hot water out up here. Um, then you've got power. One of these runs all this gizmo here. And the other one runs the, the booster thing that's in there. Um, yeah, so that's gone. That can go in the bin. So that, oh, I'll get that later. Um, so yeah, had a big tidy up all through here. Had a big... Uh, a little bit of tidy up in here it was a bit dirty um, this is not a sealed shed so it's um yeah it gets full of sand but it wasn't too bad last time I did in here was when we did that aircon when we replaced the aircon there so yeah it wasn't too bad um, I, I clean up in here because I keep all my paint in here so oh and then another thing we're gonna do today is fix this so this door is not quite long enough I got it on special at uh, Bunnings. It was like a scratch and dent thing. Um, <clears throat> and I just needed a door for that area, but it wasn't, like I said, not quite long enough. So what I'm gonna do is I have the old panels from here. Just wanna chop them down a bit, but I'm gonna get some of that stuff and cut it and um, put a little filler. I do have a gutter down there, which would probably be enough to fix it but oh you know what i just had a thought because <clears throat> that that um hang on bear with me we'll get back to the heater that's kind of how my mind works goes from one thing to another but i do have i've got a bit of steel here that's from the from the hot water system and it's going to go in the bin so I might be able to flatten that out and make a nice filler bit in there that's metal and screw it. Um, I've done it with some plastic garden edging. It lasted a year and then it deteriorated and uh, went away. I put that rubber that's on there now, one of them's broken off. Um, and I need to fix it before it starts raining and it's gonna be raining on the weekend because otherwise the rain just fills that, fills that up in there. Um, I don't think I kept any more. I normally keep little bits of steel like that, but yeah, I might go on the water heater and see what else I can salvage off it and maybe get a nice bigger flat bit. But anyway, that's besides the point. So the guy came yesterday. He's a really nice nice guy. He's he's actually the same plumber that did um, the big hook up for this tap not to be filtered water. Um, and when I rang him to do that, he came on the day to look at it. Um, well, that afternoon, you know, a few hours later. And um, came back like three days later to actually come and do it. Um, he would have come sooner, but it was really hot when I was looking at doing this and he said he didn't want to go spend too much time in the roof on like a 40, 40, 45 degree day. So we, we waited until it was a cloudy, cooler day. But if it wasn't for that, he probably would have come um, quicker. So I was pretty happy with him, how he uh, did all this. So um, I rang him up yesterday in the morning, 7.30, answered the phone. Um, he said, yeah, yeah, no dramas, I'll come and have a look at it because he said we might be able to just change the booster bit because that's the bit that's broken. The tank's fine and the, and the panels are okay. Um, he came and looked at it and said, nah, it's all integrated. Can't, um, can't change it. And then he goes, how old is it? And I said, it's 12 years old. And he said, well, these things have pretty much got a 10 year life on them. So it's, it's not even worth fixing. So um, we're going to leave. 
we're going to leave that on the roof and the other unit that's down the side of the side of the house that's all going to go uh, he's going to take it away with him as well um, and we're going to replace it with a heat pump hot water system i never heard about him until yesterday when he told me about him because I, I just said oh what do we do just put an instantaneous or an in uh, kind of what we have now but not hook it up to the solar so you have a, a gas boosted tank system and he said no well tankless is better because that way you're only heating the water that you're using and I said okay uh, he said otherwise you've got this other option which is a heat pump which uh, has a tank uh, but you can tell it when to heat the water in the tank so you do it from like 10 to 4 um, that way our solar panels are making uh, the max amount of electricity they're going to make and that is what is heating up the water i'm pretty sure that's what he said um, he said they're not really worth it they're, they're still very efficient but they're even better if you've got solar panels you're pretty much not paying to heat your water up as long as you get a day like today with a bit of sun in it um, and he said if you do have cloudy days and it's not enough to heat it during that time it then switches to an instantaneous electric heated system um, and he said which is still pretty efficient he was saying that the solar panels have to make one kilowatt of power and that unit will put four kilowatts of heating into the water so it's it's like a four to one ratio which is um, pretty good if that's true um, he's got no reason to lie to me um, apparently these heat pumps are mandatory in New Zealand and we're slowly catching up over here uh, so if you build a new house or do any renovations you, you must put this kind of heat pump in because that's how efficient they are so yeah so that was yesterday oh, I turned the hot water on yesterday morning and there was like almost nothing. I was like, oh no, but um, if you did see where those electrical power points were, this has happened about a year ago and one of them actually wiggled loose and came out. So I just went, connected it back up, everything turned back on and we had hot water up until yesterday. Um, and I thought that's what happened. So I went out there, nah, everything on, everything connected. Um, and it was flashing an error code. So I told him the error code, he goes, yeah, it's an igniter, but that doesn't mean it's the igniter. That could mean other things. He came and tested it and he showed me I was there when he was doing it. And he said, yeah, see, this doesn't work, this doesn't work. And then we turned it off, turned it back on and nothing came back to life. It was just dead, the whole unit's dead. So yeah, she's she's kaput. Um, so yeah, rang him yesterday, 7.30. He came at one o'clock to look at it, said what I just said then. And um, gave me a quote last night, happy with the quote, and we're going to go ahead. And he's coming today at 11, so in two days he's, he's sorted it out for us. So he's pretty much got to cap the gas, because like I pointed out, that gas line there. Um, he'll have to cut and cap that, because we no longer need gas over there now. Uh, I think he's got a Sparky coming to run a dedicated uh, isolated line to, to the unit from our meter box, which is just there. Uh, that's happening today as well and also um what else was there oh he's got to cut and cap the glycol line from the panel to the tank um he said he'll leave all the pipes there he'll leave them all in the roof he said there's no point otherwise you're just going to open if you take this down um he's going to charge me extra if i wanted to take it down but then you're going to leave holes in the roof where all it's screwed down and where that pipe goes into the roof i said just leave it's not leaking so just leave it so yeah we're just going to leave it um so yeah so hopefully it's all sorted today i'll give you an update kind of um after he leaves i suppose and we'll go and test it out and make sure it's all working uh what else has been happening let's go for a walk um dogs are finally going pretty good i did mention he had a leaky bum that's kind of fixed now we put him on pumpkin and a bit of facilium husk and he's pretty good and because he can't miss out on the pumpkin and facilium husk i've been giving him a little bit because he doesn't really need it but it's actually doing that has fixed up his licking a bit so um we're going to keep him on the pumpkin i don't know what it is but yeah it's like a miracle miracle cure because we're going out of out of our minds putting up with both of them uh the blinds out here are good i've got them tucked away at the moment because it was quite windy the other day so yeah they're all they're all tucked away but on a day like today it's only going to be quite oh, 25 or something so you don't really need them so that's all good um Oh, I printed some photos. I've got a little photo printer. You probably can't see them. We'll take them outside. Just for some memories of the old car. So I've got, um, that's the motor going in. Motor going in. That was when we kind of first did it. 
I uh, can't remember, that was when I just took it to the place to sell. And yeah, just got some nice photos. So what I'm gonna do is make up a little picture frame with some photos. And um, yeah, that should be a cool thing, just for memories. And I actually caught up with the guy. Um, when I sold the car, I told, I told the guy that was selling the car to pass my number on to whoever buys it, just in case they got any questions or whatever. And uh, he said, yeah, yeah, no worries. So um, yeah, he passed it on and the guy got in contact with me the other day. I think he picked it up last Wednesday, something like that, Wednesday, Wednesday night, I think it was. He picked it up and um, called me on Monday and I said, look, yeah, I'll, I'm gonna, after work, I can swing past yours or if you wanna bring it over for a drive. I said, I've got those photos. I'll put them on a little USB stick for him. Um, so he could see the original car, how it started. And went, I took some photos when I was at the paint shop when we were doing the motor up and everything. And uh, yeah, he was keen, he's a nice guy, old old fella, just retired, uh, pulled some money out of his super to pay for the car. He said, you know, other people buy caravans and boats, bugger that, I wanted a car. Uh, his mates, one of his mates has got a Mustang, an old Mustang, and the other one's got an old Camaro. So he wanted a car so he could go cruising with them and he's stoked with it. Uh, he just had a couple questions about what coolant, what oil uh, I've been using, just so he can keep it up the same. Uh, so yeah, told him all about that, uh, told him, I had a switch, a hidden switch under the dash to cut uh, electricity to the fuel pump, so I told him where that was. Um, I had another switch that forced both thermo fans to come on, so that way if you're in traffic and it's a hot day and the fans haven't come on yet, but you know it's gonna, you're gonna be in traffic for a little while, you can force the fans to come on, so that way you don't even let the car get hot. Um, but since the Holy Sniper had been controlling the fans. I've never had to, I've never used that switch anyway. The car doesn't run hot anyway. Um, it was a worst case scenario caught in traffic for whatever reason. And I don't drive that car when it's hot anyway because it doesn't have aircon and it's quite warm. Um, I told him where the little knob was to turn the sub down in the boot. He said he's actually gonna get rid of the sub out of the boot because there is no space in the boot uh, when you've got that big speaker box in there. And he's like 65, I'd say not into two 12 inch. 600 watt subs so um he's going to pull that his mate's son's a car stereo person so he's going to pull the amp and the thing out and that way it'll give him uh the big box will go and one amp that's mounted to the back of the back seat will go uh, on a board but um it's not mounted to metal but yeah it's on an isolated board but um yeah so that way he'll get his boot space back He's, I said, once you do that, you're probably gonna to have to re-carpet some of the boot because that box didn't go on top of carpet. But anyway, he's, he's, he's pretty handy anyway. He said he'll look after that. So yeah, so I said, keep in contact. Let me know if you ever sell it, pass my number on to the next person because it'd be cool to stay in contact with it. Um, so yeah, I don't think he's gonna sell it though, not anytime soon. Um, he'll, he'll, he's probably got a good um, 20 odd years with it, I'd say. So, uh, yeah, yeah, but no, uh, other than that, everything's good. I've rang Nissan. Uh, my mate is a car salesman who put me on. He doesn't work at Nissan. He works at another dealer. Uh, he's the one that looked after me. He knows, so my mate knows the dealer principal of the group that controls Nissan, Subaru, Mazda. It's one group that controls a lot of different um, car selling people. So he knows the boss of that group because he used to be the dealer principal of where he used to work. They, they, it's a funny industry. They all kind of know each other and they all spread out, but they all always reconnect with each other. It's a bit, bit of a funny industry. Um, so yeah, when I told him I wanted to buy a Nissan, he said, let me give my mate a call because he'll look after you. And I did get a, a pretty good deal. Um, from what I'm reading on the forums, no one's got close to what I've paid for it, uh, plus including the free stuff. So um, that they chucked in mats. They chucked in floor mats as like 300 bucks. Um, full tank of juice, which this day and age is like $150. Um, and 12 months rego, which they own, and that's a thousand bucks as well. And um, what's the name? They normally include six months, not 12 months, but they did 12 months for me. Um, and I paid for it, but I'm getting it ceramic coated on the inside and I'm going to do the outside. So the car should be dialed in when I get it. Oh, and they're tinting it as well for free. So yeah, they're going to tint it too. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, uh, I rang him. We we'll just, he just rang me up and we we're just talking and he said, well, let me call the guy now. Cause now that you've got the money from selling your car, you're good to go. So, uh, let me call him. So he called him and, um, 
no boulder gray autos red interior anywhere in australia and he said but he will keep an eye out and if one does get delivered to sydney he'll put his hand up for it and it'll come here sydney melbourne wherever over east um, as long as it's not allocated to somebody if someone's ordered exactly what i've want and it's in sydney and it's going there for them then that's their car but if it's just getting de delivered to a di he knows what's coming out of nissan so he can divert it and tell it to come here for me um, otherwise mine will rock up eventually, but if there's one sooner, he can divert it and, and make it come here rather than go over east and sit at a dealer there until somebody buys it. Um, so yeah, he knows what combo I'm after is uh, what I'm trying to say there. So he's going to put the feelers out and see. Uh, well, he's, he's already looked and there's none in Australia, but if something comes quicker than mine, then I can get that. Uh, knowing that I've got the cash now ready to go. Cause, so yeah, all good. So, but yeah, big chunk of that cash has gone to the new water heater. So that was a bit, bit of a disappointment. Only just got paid the other day, last week out of it, and four grand's already gone to a new heater. But anyway, uh, you need hot water. So it's a bit of a necess necessity, that's for sure. Uh, let me just open this, just put the dishwasher on. So this dishwasher must heat its own water up because there's no, see the steam coming out of it. There's no way that water in the tap is hotter than that. Um, so yeah, all good. Got the twins, my niece and nephew twins' birthday tonight, so we're going to their place for dinner. Uh, have a few drinks there, nice meal. They only live two streets away, so we can walk there. So that's pretty handy. Um, yeah, but that's about it. Um, what else is going on? I've got my old man coming around tomorrow, so that's what I mean. I, had, I wasn't going to take today off because I'm taking tomorrow off. Um, because the old man's coming around to help me paint. Um, this is still a carryover from two years ago. I don't know if you're going to see it because it's not that bright outside at the moment. It's pretty early in the morning. But we'll see if we can see it. Um, right near, I don't know if it'll show up on camera, but right near the cornice where the ceiling and the cornice meets, you can see a dark line. Um, the paint, there was something wrong with the paint or there was something wrong with the ceiling, I'm not sure. That's actually cracked, I think. Yeah, there's a massive crack all through there. That's new, that wasn't there like two days ago. Great, so I'll have to fix that as well. And then in here, you can see it's just ultra patchy. There was something wrong with the paint. Um, I ended up getting, I took photos. It was way worse than this um, two years ago when the painter did it and I took photos set. This whole room was like tiger stripes all the way through it. Yeah, it was really bad. And um, I took photos, went to Dulux. Uh, I sent them to Dulux with an email and I, they actually refunded my money for the paint, which was good. And I tried to get the money out of them, another 500 bucks, because that's what the painter was going to charge me to redo it. Um, and they wouldn't pay me that. They'd only pay me the, um, the cost of the paint, which was a bit disappointing. But at least I got something back. So I went and bought some Torbman's ceiling paint. And me and Dad have done this probably about a year after. So probably last February we did... Uh, this room we did a bit in here but we must have missed this bit it's hard it's really hard because it's white on white and you can't really tell and once you've been looking at this for like two hours you, your eyes just can't focus on like a patch like that um, you're just looking at white all day so and we had some bright lights on as well so probably we won't use those bright lights because that's what kind of washes it out and you can't see all the little detail but yeah I've got enough to do this room has to be done again but it doesn't need the cornices done so we're just going to do this room quickly with this room sorted apart from the edges and I'm going to have to fix that crack now that I've just noticed. So yeah, this room's all sorted apart from a couple of, it's not even all the edges, it's just one bit there. And the only reason is, is when you're sitting here having brekkie, you look over and you can see it, especially if the sun's right through, it's like a black stripe all the way down. And that one there is pretty bad. This is all good. This is all good. And that one's all good. You don't notice it. It might, it's probably there, but you don't stand over there looking that way, is what I'm trying to say. So it's only these ones that run this way. Uh, we painted this in here again, because that was stuffed. So we did all that. And we got to about this smoke detector. Uh, no, that's for the alarm. Um, we got to here and ran out of paint. So we need to finish this off. And then we're gonna keep going until we've run out of paint again. Uh, do this. Uh, it's not too bad in here and our bedroom was not too bad but if we've got enough we're just going to keep going there's no point keeping the paint it's just going to go off so yeah but definitely well, I think we're going to start in that room tomorrow because that's the worst then continue down here and then go in there and I'd, I'd say 
it's only one coat we need as well. Um, I'd say by the time we get to our bedroom, we're going to be out of paint. Um, I did find, I'm going to, we're going to look outside. I did find, I've probably got about three litres of ceiling white. So I'm hoping that might be enough. But then just going through all my stuff just now, I did find another, another uh, tin, which is ceiling white. But it's dual up. So this is the, yeah, see that's almost full. So uh, that's good. We have used it though, you can see it there, but that's almost full. This is like a mold resistant one that you use for bathrooms. So um, yeah, we might, and that's half full. It's probably down to here. So yeah, we might just use that in the games room, the hallway, and then the office. And then if we keep going into our bedroom, that'll run out. Then we'll click over to this one and then just start from our ensuite and just finish our bedroom off. And that way we don't have that stripy paint stuff anymore. So that's for tomorrow, that's for tomorrow. Um, I've got a couple marks on the walls, so that's wall paint. So I'm going to use that to top that up, to, uh, just to fix that up. And this is um, doors, architraves, and skirting boards. I've actually written it there. Yeah, so um, I've got a couple little chips on some of the stuff, so I'll just refresh it while we've got everything out. Might as well do it. So uh, that's from yesterday from the solar hot water, so from the hot water. So there's all my stuff ready to go. Um, going to use that for patching up on the doors and the walls. Different paint, so I just have to wash it in between. Um, that's for the ceiling, drop sheets, and then some other drop sheets to go over the furniture. And I already had all this stuff, so which is good. I didn't even have to go to Bunnings. The only thing I'm missing now is something flexible to to fix so I might have to go to Bunnings because I don't have any I don't think roofing gutter no don't have any so yeah maybe I will have to do a trip to Bunnings today uh, something to fix that uh, cornice um, just something flexible to push in that joint and then just go over it with a brush so I'll probably need to grab a brush as well I don't think I've got any brushes um, so yeah that's it so that's the update but um, I'll cut it there and I'll give you a update after the plumber's gone and uh, we'll go from there. Hopefully, well, it will work. Hot water tonight. Beautiful. See ya. Morning, everyone. Uh, next morning, I uh, didn't have time. I've just, just been treating the grass. It's a really cold morning this morning. So I um, got down to seven degrees or something. Um, so I thought I'll do it today. Had a bit of a smell yesterday afternoon. I could smell it. I hadn't done it in ages. So thought I'd better do it. Um, we're actually going to get a fair bit of rain fr uh, tomorrow, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday and Tuesday uh, over those five, six days, whatever it is. Um, so I thought I'd do it now and then probably towards Monday, Tuesday, if it's still a fair bit of rain on the forecast, I'll do it again. Um, it's just we haven't had any rain. It's crazy. It's like almost May. Uh, uh, sorry, it's almost June and um, haven't had any rain whatsoever. So that's why it's getting... Um, not bad, but it was smelling yesterday because we haven't had any rain. As soon as the rain starts and it's once a week or whatever, it just flushes it right down. You don't get anything. And then it resets it and it takes halfway through summer for it to actually start to smell again. But I'm going to try and keep on top of it, do it once every, at least once every two, three weeks, um, e even in winter. Um, in summer, I've got to do it probably once every two weeks at least. But um, yeah, no, nah, it's all good. Um, so my old man's coming around today. It's only not even seven o'clock at the moment. Uh, he's not going to be here till nine, so I've got a fair bit of cleaning up to do. Um, we're going we're gonna to have a barbie for lunch. I went and got some nice steaks, so um, I'm going to just clean this area. I just get the blower; it's just all dusty on the table and everything. So go and do that. We're going to have a look at the new hot water system. So that guy came yesterday. So you got to um, if I can get it off. It's got a magnet. So you got a screen there, so this turned off, I'm not too sure what time it turned off, but um, it wasn't running when we got home at about 8 o'clock, 8.30 last night, so hasn't run since 8.30 last night, and it's still 58, it's set to 60 degrees, so it's dropped a good degree and a half all overnight, and like I said, it was a cold night last night, 7 degrees, so um, yeah, so that's the unit, it's a heat pump unit. Hopefully it's more efficient. Um, 
not much else I can say. The plumber came about 11. He left about 1.30. And then the Sparky came about 2.30 and just converted the power point that we had to an isolation switch and it's all hardwired in. Um, and that's about it. I've just got to do a bit of clean up. All this junk is from the old tank. Um, so I've just got to sweep all that up. If it sweeps up, it's probably like a mud. Oh no, it'll sweep up. Yeah, cool. So that's for later on. I just wanted to wait for it to dry because all this got flooded yesterday because uh, you had to drain the old tank before we could take it out. So um, yeah, I don't know. I don't. I know nothing about these. I had a quick quick look when he told me about them just to make sure that we're keen on getting one. And um, that's what we ended up with. It's a 270 litre tank. Um, yeah, not much more else I can say. So what, what he did, what he did tell me is that uh, it only, I should have, there's a sticker on it, it says it's one kilowatt of power in and that transfers that one kilowatt of power to four kilowatts of heating. Um, they reckon they're really efficient, so give it a shot, see how we go. Um, and I mean the insulation on it is second to none, that, that lost... I got up this morning and it only lost half a degree overnight and now it's lost another degree since uh, two hours ago just because it's so cold but um, I've programmed it so the, the main thing on this is that you program it to only work between the hours of when your solar panels your electric solar panels are making bulk power so we've got six kilowatt system up on the roof that thing only requires one kilowatt but I mean like right now the sun's all the way over there so we're not making any power we're not making probably even a kilowatt i don't reckon um plus normally at work at this time anyway we don't need hot water so the main time we need hot water is probably from about 5 p.m till 7 p.m it's only for like a two hour window to have showers do the dishes and that's it um so yeah um <clears throat> so i've got the i've got it set on that screen there so it only operates between the hours of 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. So, yeah, it, it's going to come on at 10, but you've just seen the, the temperature of the water there. It may hit 57 degrees by 10 o'clock. So it's only got to jack it up 3 degrees. It's only got to warm that water up 3 degrees. And to warm that water up to 3 degrees, it's using, it's free anyway. So it works really good. So, um... Yeah, hopefully that's how it works. That's how I read the instructions, and to me that's what it makes more sense. Uh, hopefully it does work like that. It, if you do have a cloudy day, um, so that heat pump, it doesn't matter if it's sunny or anything. It's it's only, you're not going to pay for it if it's sunny. The heat pump actually draws the heat out of the air, surrounding air, sucks it in. It's like the opposite to an air conditioner, I suppose. Um, and uses that to to uh, to do it. It does have an electrical booster, like an element, heating element in it, which I did turn on last night, so I would have used a fair bit of power last night, because by the time they left, it was four o'clock, um, plus, and we wanted a hot shower that night, so I did leave it on last night, and by the time we got home, we went out for dinner last night, by the time we got home about 8.30, it was at 60 degrees, so, um, and that's the maximum it gets to, is 60. Um, it keeps it at 60 so that there's no bacteria growing in the tank and then it blends it as it comes out to feed the house back down to 55 because that's the legal limit you're allowed to have over here is 55 degrees for hot water uh so yeah not much else i can say hopefully it's a winner i can't say how good it is because we've had it literally 12 hours um so but i mean we got up this morning and there's steam coming out of uh, steam coming off the water uh out of the hot water taps so and it's to me, it feels hotter than what it was, but that's only because it's probably set at 55. The old one was set at 50, I think. So, um, yeah. But anyway, uh, we'll do that. So this has been five minutes. I'm just going to water water that in now so it penetrates a little bit deeper. Uh, probably give it two more watering. So I'll just normally water it, let it sit for 10, and then water it again to get it even deeper and flush it all off the top, and then just leave it. Um, the only thing about this is if it is, it's going to be, because there's no clouds, it's going to get to about 25, 26 today. And that seems to be the magic number where this really stinks. Um, I noticed it yesterday. And um, I don't know, if, if it's too cold, it's like it doesn't smell because it's cold. 
Uh, we've had a few cold days before and it doesn't smell. Um, and then if it goes above 30, it doesn't smell either. It's like it, the heat kills whatever the smell is. But around 25 to 30, that's where it really pongs. So, And I could just start to smell it yesterday. So I thought, oh, I'll get on top of it today. So all good. So we got the paint to the paint ready to go for when my dad comes today. Um, and that's about it. So um, I'll give you an update on the painting, I suppose. I'll keep this video going. And um, yeah, when he goes, we'll give you an update on the paint. And um, hopefully we have enough paint to do what we need to do. That'll be, that'll be good. So, uh, but otherwise, yeah, that's about it. Catch you later. Um, probably can't see it, but it's a, it's a heat better than what it was. So we pretty much did one coat in that room, one coat in here, finished off the bit that we needed to here. So that's all done. Uh, finished off the edges around here. So they're all nice and blended in now. You don't have any dark spots, so that's all cool. Uh, coffee table's up like that because I was trying to block the dogs from not coming in here. So when we were painting, um, just so I didn't get paint on them, step in the paint or whatever. This, we pretty much did half of this room because this, this side was pretty good for some reason. There was just this bit of patchy stuff over here. So yeah, that worked all good. Uh, and then I was talking to my old man about this. Oh, and actually I've got enough paint left over uh, to fix these cornices in here. You probably can't see it, but um, I hate painting so much that I've got a spray gun thing to do this. And I couldn't even be bothered masking it up. I thought, you know, it's just a garage, who cares? Um, it's getting on my nerves a little bit, so uh, the garage is looking good. I just gave this a mop because this got absolutely hammered through here yesterday with the guy doing the solar hot water system. Um, there was just water and footprints and mud and stuff all through pretty much on that side. So um, gave this a nice mop. Took the car through the car wash, so that's come up a million bucks again. Uh, might as well, sleeps inside, so look after it. Um, so you can see here there's just no room it I, if you watch my video when I was reorganizing this garage a couple months back um, I said I was going to keep it like this for a while and see if it got on my nerves and see if I could change something around uh, pretty much come to the conclusion that the this car is going to stay on that side because if it was on this side over here um, you wouldn't even be able to open this door there's just no room like the end of the car would be kind of right here there's just no room so that's gonna to have to stay on that side. And right now my missus' car is here, it only comes up to that line, so you've got heaps of room. But when, my, when I get my new car, it's gonna come just past it. So it makes sense to have the shorter car on this side, because it gives you more room to walk in. Um, but one thing that doesn't make sense is stuff like that. Because if you, especially with my new car, you run over that with the front tire, you're, like, you're gonna scratch the rim at best, or you're gonna tip it over and it's gonna dent the door. So stuff like that's got to go. Um, pretty much this is going to go. Everything here is going to go. We'll probably keep that and the towels in here. Um, this is going to go. And we just come back from Stratco, just went to price up. So what I'm going to do is just outside this door where the water heater is, um, there's enough room to put a slimline shed. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm about to ring the guy up now to order it. We went there, but they had two different sizes. So. I got the biggest one I could fit in that space. It's got a sliding door on the front as well, so you don't have to waste room uh, opening a door. 2.2 uh, metres long, 1.95 metres high, and 850 mil, or 0.85 of a metre, uh, off, off the house wall out, so it, it's fine. Um, our aircon, if you remember our aircon, that sticks out 920, so that's the bottleneck, not the shed. So that'll give you still plenty of room to walk, but. Yeah, so um, I'm going to ring him up now and order that. And my, man, my old man's on holidays until the end of next week and the shed will rock in Thursday, he said, if I order it today. Um, or tomorrow, I could order it today or tomorrow. If I, if I do that, then it'll be in a week from tomorrow. Uh, but next Thursday, so um, they get a delivery on every Thursday. So I finish at 12 on Friday, so that works out really good. My old man's going to come up. Um, jump in my car, put the tow, bar, tow ball thing on it. Um, they, they have trailers to hire. Uh, not they, It's a courtesy trailer, so you don't have to pay for it. They'll chuck the shed on the trailer for me. I'll bring it home, and then I've just got to bring the trailer back to them, come back home, and my old man will give us a hand to build it. Um, so yeah, so we'll do that. And then that way, all of this stuff is gonna go in that shed out the back. And all of this stuff, I don't know if you can see it. Uh, oh yeah, there's a bit of room here. 
So all of that, the ramps, all that stuff, that's everything that's pretty much on the floor is going to go out there. I reckon the only thing that's going to be left is um, probably some shoes maybe over there, the towels and a bin, and all of this stuff will just go. Um, car washing stuff, everything, everything's going to go out there and it's just easy accessible then and um, I'll do that. And then what I'm thinking of doing is um, making up a, a doggy gate. Um, I do have some doggy gates, but they're, they're uh, all interlinked and they're quite long. All I need is just like a little, a little one to block up from probably the other side of the water heater or the shed. So then that way I can have this door open um, and have access to the shed and I'm not worried about the dogs running out and going out on the road because they will. They're not the type of dog just to like sit on there and you know if someone walks past they just look at them. These, these guys will go running after everything. So yeah I need a way to stop the dogs from coming anywhere past the, where the water heater is because you're going to have the water heater then the shed. Um, so if I can stop them coming this way just while I'm got that door open and I'm washing a car or whatever, that'll be that'll be really good. I know there's one less thing on my mind then. So um, yeah, so we're gonna have a bit of a clean up. I got rid of all the drop sheets and everything, but there's a bit of crap on the floor, so I might have a quick sweep. Uh, and then I'm gonna oh here's the shed here. So it's that one there, but I'm gonna be getting. It's a shame because you can get the zinc aluminum, a zinc I don't know zinc al. I don't know what that. It's not. It's definitely not aluminium. Um, but it's just a silver colour. Um, it's more expensive to get the coloured um, powder coated one. Um, I don't want a coloured one, I just wanted the normal silver, but for the size that I want, the 2.2 uh, is, you can't get it, which is a shame, so it's 600 bucks instead of probably like, yeah, I don't know, but anyway. But yeah, the, the other option was this one, but this is 2.9, it's a double door, double sliding. But it's um, a little bit too, I'd, I wouldn't be able to open this door um, and I wouldn't be able to open the existing door, the swing door in, that's in the garage. So this, this is a little bit too big. Um, but yeah, for $20 extra, I could have got more space but because that's 620 and this is 600. Um, but yeah, it's just not gonna fit. So that's, that's my only option. So, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to celastic pretty much every join after I've built the shed. I'm going to celastic every single join up. Um, I'm going to celastic the thing down to the brick paving. Um, I'm going to spray foam the gaps between the roof and the walls and then tape it, tape over it as well. Uh, that way uh, I don't get any dust or spiders or anything. Um, I'm also going to put some seal, some rubber seal or weather shields or whatever um, around the door so nothing can come in. Um, I, I've had cabinets in that area before and they just get full of water and all sorts of stuff But yeah, I'm definitely going to try and make this as, as waterproof as possible. So That'll be good. But anyway, so that's next that that'll be probably the next video I'd say that's probably the next project I've got on the on the go. So um, yeah, that'll be a Couple of weeks away before we do that. But anyway, all good Anyway, cheers for watching and we'll catch you guys later